What is the Higgs boson? Has it really been found, and where was it hiding? For the answers to those and other current science questions, I spoke earlier today with noted ASU physicist Lawrence Krauss. Always good to see you. Thanks for joining us. It's always great to be here. Uh, it's good to have you, and I want to talk about the Higgs boson. Last time you were on, you took off, and then a few days later, Higgs boson explodes. So I want to get your thoughts on that, because we got you back. But before all that, uh, since you've been gone, uh, we landed on Mars. We got this Curiosity mission. What are you, theoretical physicists, what does a theoretical physicist, <laughs> cosmologist, look for in a mission like this? Well, you know, first of all, it's incredibly exciting. I mean, I was more excited, I think, when this thing landed, I watched it. I was in I was in Australia, right? In fact, where the signals come in and are relayed They're from the Deep Space Network in Australia, and I was as excited as I had been since the moon landing. I think just it was so neat to watch. But then the really exciting thing about this uh, mission, in principle, is it'll tell us if the conditions for life uh, once existed on Mars. And and what I'm excited about is the possibility. I expect we will discover evidence of at least past life on Mars. But the big surprise would be if it weren't our cousins. Because w what we've discovered is that no planet is an island. Material from Mars comes to Earth. It gets knocked out by meteors, makes its voyage to Earth. We find Martian meteorites in Antarctica. And it goes the other direction. And microbes can exist inside rocks. And so if there's life on one planet, it could easily pollute the other. And since Mars probably was hotter and wetter in really early times, perhaps the life on Earth originated on Mars. So if you want to know what Martians look like, you just look in the mirror. <laughs> and so, so for me, I'd be very excited, ultimately, if there's, if there's evidence that there was once life on Mars. And the big surprise for me would be if it was really an independent genesis. That would be amazing. So there's lots of good questions. If there was water on the surface, and, and we really want to know the conditions. And, and this is really the first mission that can tell us. Yeah, I was going to say, what do we look for as far as daily reports and photographs and, and all this? <laughs> the information's flooding in, and apparently it's going to flood in for quite a while. Uh, when do we start you know, looking, hey, hey, what, what's going on? Well, I'm sure NASA will let us know. NASA's pretty good about yeah, that. Yeah. It's, it's going to be slow. In fact, uh, yeah, it, it could be, it's going to be a month, I think, before the rover starts to move. And I was recently told it might be up to a year before it actually cracks open the first rock. It's going to be kind of slow. So there was a really exciting landing, but it's, it's, it's ramping up slowly, and uh, we just have to be patient. But you can go online and see the most amazing images. I was, I was looking at this interactive three-dimensional cam where you can actually look at the all around the rover and, and focus down on the rover itself. Yeah. And, to me, it's just like being there. I love it. Well, some of these photographs look like the drive to, to San Diego. I mean, well, in you fact, know. it looks just like the Southwest, doesn't yes. it? It looks just yes. like Arizona. Yeah, I, I don't know if we should publicize that, that Mars <laughs> looks like Arizona. But. Well, we've had worse <laughs> things said about us. All right, let's get to the Higgs boson. Mm -hmm. What is the Higgs boson, and where has it been hiding all these it's, years? It's been hiding it all around us. The Higgs boson is is in some sense, if it's there, and we think it's there, the, the, the data is remarkable and it's compelling that something's been discovered and that something looks very much like a Higgs. And we have to step back a little bit. To, to me, it's, it, it, it's the cap of the greatest intellectual journey in some sense that humans have ever undertaken, the, the development of the standard model of particle physics. That uh, 40 years ago, we understood one out of the four forces of nature. Now we understand three, and that development of developing a mathematical theoretical model of these forces suggested that two of the four forces in nature, which look very different, electromagnetism, which is responsible for the lights and, and the television we're talking on, and the weak interaction, which is a very weak force but nevertheless powers the sun, they look very different, incredibly different. Electromagnetism operates across the universe. The weak force only operates across a nucleus. But we discovered they could be different manifestations of the same force. The problem is, in order to, uh, for that to be true, in quantum mechanics, the particle that conveys a force, if all forces are conveyed by particles, and electromagnetism is long range because the particle that conveys electromagnetism is called the photon, it's massless. The particles that convey the weak force are very heavy. They're called W and Z bosons, and they were discovered about 25 years ago and won the Nobel Prize for that. How could uh, two forces, one of which is conveyed by heavy particles and another conveyed by a massless particle, really be different manifestations of the same thing? This is where the Higgs comes in. And in fact, it was so slimy, I never believed it was true, because the, the idea was that there's a background invisible field throughout all of space called the Higgs field, mm -hmm. and, and the W and Z particles interact with the Higgs field. At a basic level, all particles are massless. 
And these W and Z particles interact with the Higgs field and get some resistance as they move. And therefore, they act like they're very massive. It's an accident of our existence, whereas the photon doesn't, and it remains massive. So because of that accident, these two forces look very different. And then it didn't take long for physicists to realize, well, if this field is responsible for the mass of the W and Zs, maybe it's responsible for the mass of all particles. Maybe some particles interact more strongly with this field and behave heavier. Yes. Some particles interact less strongly, behave lighter. And some particles, like the photon, don't interact at all. Well, why would the photon not interact at all? How can it get through this? I think you described it as like a cosmic molasses. It's a cosmic molasses for the particles that interact with it. it well, the photon doesn't have any charge basically. It doesn't have any electric charge and it doesn't have any weak charge. These, the different forces in nature have different charges. And the particles, the reason electrons interact with other electrons is they're charged particles. But the photon doesn't have any of the so-called quantum numbers that would allow it to interact. And, and that's a, a remarkable accident of nature. It didn't have to be that way. What it's saying is, in some sense is that our existence is an accident. And it's a cosmic accident based on this invisible field. But invisible fields are not the subject of science. They're subject of religion, maybe, but not science. The neat thing that quantum mechanics tells us is if you hit that field hard enough in a little spot with enough energy, you'll kick out real particles. And what we've been looking for for 45 years is a machine with the energy that can have enough energy focused in a small enough region to basically smack that field hard enough to kick out the real particles. Are you saying that the particle accelerator there, the large hadron, whatever it's called yeah. over there, it basic? I thought it. I thought the particles collide together. Are what? you saying the field collided? Well, the together? part of there's fields at a small level. Fields and particles are are very similar. You take two protons and you smash them together with enough energy. But the idea is that if you smash them together with enough energy, you can turn the mass of those protons into enough energy to excite this background Higgs field and kick out real particles. And it's that that's the way that we're producing, we think, these Higgs particles. And the neat thing is it's a prediction. What, what made us so excited about the Large Hadron Collider is it's the first machine in a generation or more that's had the energy to, in principle, create the particles that we predicted existed. And I, I was betting they wouldn't exist. Because the, the explanation just seems so pat. The idea that there's this invisible field throughout nature it just seemed too easy. Yeah. I thought nature would come up with another solution. And I'm kind of, kind of amazed. And, and of course, in the United States, 25 years ago, we would have had another collider if the Congress had, yes. had then had the Actually, wisdom. Arizona to, was involved in that a little bit as and, well. And at the time, they said it just cost too much money. It was $5 billion, which is the air conditioning bill in, in Iraq in one, for one day. I mean, it's oh, really. But back, back to the collider and what we saw there. Um, did we see, are, are we seeing new particles develop when these two particles in the accelerator collide? When they collide, when and, each, and each of those collisions produces sometimes thousands of particles because so much energy gets turned into matter. Does that suggest what could have happened at the Big Bang? Well, it, it takes us a lot closer to the, big ba the origin of the Big Bang. The, what the Large Hadron Collider does is take us back to about a millionth of a millionth of a second after the Big Bang. And, you know, that's really exciting because we think... You know, one of the things we've talked about in the past is that this galaxy, our galaxy we live in, is dominated by this stuff called dark matter, which we think is a new type of elementary particle created in the very early universe, and these particles are remnants left over that dominate the universe today. The neat thing about the Large Hadron Collider is if it can recreate those conditions in a very small region, it might not just create the Higgs particle, but it may create the particles that make up the dark matter. So we might not have to build detectors to discover it directly, the remnant particles produced in the Big Bang, we may create them at the Large Hadron Collider. It's a race between to see whether we create it first in the Large Hadron Collider or these direct detectors. So the dark matter comes to light, as, yeah, as it were. exactly. And so we're very excited by the Large Hadron uh, Collider. All right, the last question here, because we've got to get going here, but uh, is, we could talk for so long. This is such, it's amazing stuff. But it seems to me like everyone got excited. We kind of almost think we sort of maybe found it. Uh, did they find it or not? And then what well, are we going to find out? We're very conservative. I mean, we've, they've looked at billions and billions of collisions and seen 80 events. And what's clear is we've discovered a new particle. We've discovered a new particle. And that particle appears to have the properties of the Higgs boson. But we're very conservative because this is such an important discovery to, to, to say you've discovered this particle that really is responsible for our existence and be wrong would be pretty embarrassing. So it kind of quacks like a duck and it walks like a duck. But we're going to wait to see if it's a duck. And the nice thing is we don't, we, we don't have to wait very long because the Large Hadron Collider is currently taking data. It's going to have about three times more data than it had when it made that discovery that will allow us to test the properties 
of the particle. And so by the end of the year, we should have a pretty definitive answer, which is good because the Large Hadron Collider is turning off for two years for an upgrade yeah. at the end of the year. Yeah, so, okay. So stay tuned. All right, well, we will stay tuned. We'll try to get you back as well to talk more about this and uh, other things like your relationship with Woody Allen. You're palling around with Woody <laughs> Allen now. We'll talk about that. Uh, all right, good to see you. <laughs> it's always great to be here.